Now with these concepts in mind, we can think about the shape of a field around an electric dipole. And you might ask, what is an electric dipole? Well, the word polar just means having opposites, like the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth. We can think of those as opposite ends of the Earth. Or you might hear the word polarized. And it, 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 the word has broad usage. In politics, for example, some people might think the government ought to do this in a particular situation. Other people might think the government ought to do nothing in a particular situation. And they might, they might be polarized on this issue, two people believing opposite things. So that the word polar just means having opposites. So the word dipole means two, di means two, two opposites. So an electric dipole is just a positive charge and a negative charge. One positive and one negative together. That is an electric dipole. And we can ask, what does the electric field look like around an electric dipole? Well, let's try to draw it. Let's draw some field lines. We'll draw the field lines coming outward from, a, from the positive charge and they're inward toward the negative charge. Now near the negative charge the, the electrical forces will be dominated by the negative charge. Near the positive charge the electrical forces are dominated by the positive charge. But what does the field look like in the other regions not nearby? Well let's imagine putting a little positive test charge right there. Well the positive charge is pushing away. The positive charge is pushing in this direction so let's draw a little vector arrow here representing the force away from the positive charge and the negative charge is pulling in towards it so let's draw an arrow like this representing the force pulling toward the negative charge. Well those two vectors together are going to add up to a force to the right. Imagine some charge Q here, some little charge, and it's being pushed this way by one charge and being pulled that way by, by another. Those are two force vectors, and if we add those up with the parallelogram method for vector addition, we end up with a force to the right. And that's this little charge right here, and that part of that diagram. So that means the direction of the electric field right there is to the right. And in fact, we can make a smooth connection on those lines there. And a similar, similar thing would happen down below. We can draw these field lines something like this. And like this. You can imagine a little test charge place right here above this positive charge. It would get pushed up by that positive charge. As it got pushed up though, it's also getting pulled this way by the negative charge. So at first it's closer to the positive charge, so the force from the positive charge is dominant. So it gets pushed up and gets pulled over just a little bit. So it curves to the right just a little bit. As it gets further away from the positive charge, the upward force becomes less dominant because it's getting farther away from the positive charge pushing it up. And it's actually now getting closer to the negative charge and it gets pulled back down toward the negative charge. And that's why we have a field line that runs something like this. In fact, we could draw these other field lines. They would loop around here. And every field line would, would leave the positive charge and come into the negative charge, except for this one right on the side here that would theoretically go straight out. And this one coming straight back in from the right. Now again, you have to picture this in three dimensions to get an accurate picture. I'll try to draw this electric field around an electric dipole in three dimensions. So I'll draw x, y, and z coordinate axes here. So picture this as a three-dimensional coordinate system. So this represents right and left and up and down. And we're having a perspective view here. This represents an axis coming out of the screen and one going back in. And I'll put a positive charge up here and I'll put a negative charge back there. I'll make that red so there's a negative charge back there. And since I have my coordinate axes drawn in white, I'll switch colors and draw the field in a gold color. We can imagine a field line running straight from the positive to the negative and we can imagine one a little above that and one a little above that and another and then some down here like this. 
And let's draw some on the side, like this. And some over here. And hopefully that looks three-dimensional. That's not bad. You can do better if you have a, um, a three-dimensional piece, a, a piece of software plot this in three dimensions. But that's a, a, a representation of the electric field in three-dimensional space around an electric dipole. We can also picture the field around two like charges. Suppose we have a positive charge and another positive charge. What does the electric field look like in this region of, of space around these two positive charges? Well, around a positive charge, the field is out. So these field lines are going to be outward around both of these charges. Now picture what would happen if we dropped a little proton, say right here, above this charge. Well, it's getting pushed up by this charge. So the field is up there, but it's also getting pushed to the left a little bit because of this, this charge over here. This little proton is getting pushed by both of those. So the upward force from this large charge is dominant simply because it's closer to it. But there is some leftward push, so instead of going straight up, it veers to the left. And as it gets farther away, the push, the, the direct upward push from the, the first charge, the one on the left, becomes less dominant. So the same thing happens down here. These field lines are going to bend away like this. And this field line, too, instead of going straight out, it will be pushed a, a positive charge, a little test charge, place right here would be pushed a little further to the left because of this extra push from the other charge. And the field lines will bend this way. A positive test charge place right here will get pushed straight to the left. And this will be symmetrical. The same thing will happen over here on the right. Now if I put a little positive charge right here at that point, what's going to happen? Well, this charge on the left is pushing it away, and this charge on the right is pushing it away, something like that. The, one, the, the charge on the left is pushing it a little harder because it's closer to the charge on the left. It ends up doing something like this, these field lines, and they're going to go on up in that direction. And the same thing happens down here. And right in the middle, just at one little point, there's a, not even just a space like that, but one little point. There's a point where the electric field is canceled out. The push to the right from one charge and the push to the left from the other are equal and opposite, and so they add up to zero. And again, you have to picture this in three dimensions to get an accurate mental picture, but as far as a flat picture on the screen or on the page, that's a fair representation of the electric field around two like charges. There's one other situation that's pretty important, and this will show up later. Imagine two parallel plates. So here's a flat plate, and this is made of metal. And here's another one underneath it, and they're parallel. And let's suppose these plates are charged. One has a lot of positive charge piled up on it, and the other has a lot of negative charge piled up on it. So I'll just draw little positive signs to represent that plate being positively charged, and I'll put some negative signs down here to represent this plate being negatively charged. It turns out that the field between these plates is very uniform. The field lines are straight, they're not curved, they go directly from one to the other, and they're uniform in intensity. The field is not stronger closer to one plate uh, or weaker there in the middle when it's kind of far from both of them. The, the strength of the field is uniform throughout. And the field doesn't exist above or below the two plates. It's all canceled out. This isn't perfect. What happens is you do get a little bit of edge effects around here and these field lines. They, they get very weak here. But this uniform field, saying that the field is uniform in direction and in intensity, is a very good approximation, especially if the size of the plates is large compared to this distance between them. In other words, if you have plates that are flat and have a pretty large area compared to that very small distance, then the field in between the plates really is very, very uniform, uniform in direction and in intensity. This device has a name. This is called a capacitor. You can hook up some wires, hook up some wires to these plates, and run some electric 
for, put some voltage in there and charge up one plate positive and one negative. And this turns out to be a very useful electrical device. And we'll study this later on in the chapter.